Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's a TMK2. It's from B. Meyer Electronic in Switzerland. I think it's very old. It's probably even older than it looks to begin with. The fun thing is everything here is written both in English and in German. So they had an idea they were going to use it internally or export it as well, right? I don't really have that many instruments from Switzerland, so uh, it's going to be a little bit interesting to see what this one can do. I, I think it is a differential or a change of temperature meter. So it says a little bit here on, this, on the text like deviation. And then the idea is you put in a um, PT100 temperature probe. And the idea, again, I think you set the sensitivity of the meter in Celsius. And then you zero out. So this is the, the reference needs to be zeroed. So you zero your meter to whatever temperature you have in real life. And zero, zero, zero. And then... You can come back an hour later and see if the temperature went one Celsius up or down per indication here. So that's plus minus three in the finest. And of course it's plus minus 300 in the wildest range. <laughs> All right. We got some loose parts in here, so definitely I need to open it first. And even... This one here is loose. Oh, this one is so swampy. Oh, definitely hard to, to turn that one. Yeah, I'm also a little bit worried when I see cut cables. This is, uh, this is something I do when I have an, a broken instrument and I want to make sure that I fuck, don't forget not to power it up uh, in a future project or something like that right and here we go with the p maya electronic from switzerland they forgot to fill out half of the voltage and uh, stuff like that and that's of course for an external recorder and uh, so you can put in a temperature sensor from the back or the front connector well well this is a little bit surprising. Not exactly what I expected. So, we see two more or less identical resistor setups. And a dual match matched uh, op amp from Motorola, the MC1437L. And uh, I don't really understand the date code on that one, but it was also released in 1969, I think. I haven't been able to uh, Google anything um, super specific about that, but I've been see, uh, I've been checking out, and um, the oldest date code I can find is 69 on that one, and. Uh, Let's see what else we can find in this unit. So here is a nice little power supply. It's actually quite beautifully made. Uh, I think the two power supplies, they are more or less the same identical circuit. <laughs> I think that's quite obvious, right? So there's a little bridge rectifier, two capacitors, and the transistors, a little Cena and all that. So it's of course running a uh, plus minus supply and we got a little blue, ground and red for that. So I expect to be able to measure that. So the capacitors, they are from a uh, reefer and there's a date code, 69. So is this unit really from 69? I, th I think the build style is almost that old 
Uh, I haven't been able to find any other super proof of the year coach yet. Maybe there's something written. I don't know. But there isn't any reason for me not to power this up so far. Um, yeah, I did find the loose parts inside the case. It is this switch here and it has been cracked. Uh, it's uh, broken completely. I don't know if we can see there's a crack there. So I just pushed it all the way back and then I could could sort of turn it. And uh, so I believe it is safe in this position. I also think that this extra sensor here on the back is the black and white wire here and it goes all the way to that sensor here as well. And then we got all the other wires there. So I better figure out uh, which one is which one and what to do there. I don't know yet what can we make of this. But it's always a little bit fun to see inside uh, really funny old instruments. At least the power supply here is nice and uh, beautiful. And the amplifier board. It's actually quite nicely organized. I've been poking around with those resistor values quite a lot since we have that many on top of each other or I bet they are in parallel, right? So all the top ones there are for adjustments. So I feel I'm ready to try and power this up. Uh, the first thing I want to do is to uh, see the power supply is uh, working, uh, otherwise uh, we don't have anything good going on here, right? Well, the fuse is probably gone, right? Can't be because it's using 0.7 watts and 0.0. .0 so it actually goes on, but we get no voltage out, and it's not using any more than that. Hmm, what is going on here? That is amazing. So there is something in the metals of many of the fuses, and they just corrode like uh, old uh, Duracells. I don't know, it's really bad. So of course there's no voltage uh, through this one. I better try and uh, change this one. Ooh, that's half of the... Ooh, the fuse holder fell apart. So let's see how that turned out. With a new fuse. And we still don't get any volts. What the heck? I, uh... The fun thing is, I actually do get voltage through here. I got zero ohms through my fuse. And I get the correct voltage here. We see the black and the red wire goes to mains entry. We got two wires here where the other set goes to the power on bulb. You see, we got voltage right there. But there's nothing going through the transformer and it's not using any power. This is what's using the zero point something watts. So yeah, I can't really do a lot with this because the transformer primary is open. That is just how it is. But anyway, I will try and take the boards out and have a little look on how they are designed. Well, I'm not going to um, spend more or invest more time in repairing this because I can't really use it for anything uh, cool anyway. It's just fun to see how they did this with this op amp. I could, you know, they can drive this differential meter and you can zero this and that. And yeah, well, well, it's really a beautiful power supply design. And it's definitely made to be connected in series here at that point. I think I found the problem. Can you see the 
solder points here on mains entry. It looks like the transformer is also a little bit away from the circuit board. So I think this one was thrown out and this uh, where the G-force pulled the solderings. I think there's a fair chance I could get connection here. So that is what I would try and see if I can resolder this. Now we have a good opportunity to look at the backside of the main amplifier board. So we got all sorts of different numbers here for the different. Uh, uh, that will be the different settings. Hmm. Well, well. So after a resoldering of the transformer, I also measured. I got now connection to the windings. So let's turn on the voltage. This is not exactly what I expected. This kind of unstable behavior is a little bit weird. Okay, so it's supposed to be plus minus nine or something. Maybe 10. <laughs> Why is it like that? So that power supply is just behaving really, really bad. It's using 10 watts at the moment. My meter is fully hammered to the negative side. And um, this, ooh, here I need to be careful. I mean, this power supply is not good. What do you think? The way that it's just super, super unstable. Well, well, well. So here is a, a little follow-up on what is uh, going on with this uh, unit. Uh, I think I had some leaking capacitors or some leaking components in the power supply because it was really uh, running funny and unstable. Look what happens now when I turn this power supply on. It goes like this. Isn't that amazing? And um, kind of stay like that, super stable. So there's also another little funny thing that I figured out here. Yes, I think I earlier said uh, about the black and the white wire for this external PT100 sensor. Those two wires, they are directly connected and only connected to those two pins right there. So this means you can uh, bridge over two of the internal wires here to those two. And that means the reference temperature sensor can be using the external connector here on the back. What this thing does really is that it compares two uh, PT100 sensors and then the result is shown on the meter. So right now this meter is in dead spot center and that is because as you can see here I can adjust it. So now we can compare two temperatures of two experiments and see if one gets warmer or colder. And what I've done here is I just I'm using three 100 ohm resistors to achieve this. And here is a, a little thing. Let me show you what happens if I remove one of them. See the meter goes all the way to negative. Yes, this is difficult to video. I'm sorry about that. If I take away the other one, it goes all the way to negative. So there's now a balance between these two. And it's because the two temperatures are the same. Well, the two <laughs> resistors are just resistors, right? But you could put in um, two resistors. So, um, or two sensors, right? So I believe this unit actually works now. And we can put this back and we can shine it all up and uh, what not. So that is more or less all I wanted to show you. I have 
solve the big mystery thing here. So thank you very much for watching. See you around. Bye bye.